Good afternoon. Uh, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, we, uh, uh, the community is, uh, I was talking to Chief Donnie Morris from uh, Group PI, it's in the Mexican Big Coast League, as it used to be called. We talked about uh, helping each other. We felt that standing together would be better than standing alone. And we decided to uh, have a meeting. We went to their home community and we started talking about uh, an alliance. And uh, our well, Wabinka First Nation was there too. And the three of us agreed that we would start working together. And that's what we did. We, we decided that we would start protecting the land, the encroachment that's taking in our land, especially with mining, forestry, and other projects that are taking plan in our home communities. We don't want those kind of developments. We want to prefer, preserve our land and keep it the way it is. And about a year ago, almost a year ago, last winter, uh, the Scandica First Nation also joined our alliance and Muskrat Dam just recently came into, so now there's uh, five First Nations working together. We're going to make our voices loud and clear, and we're going to tell the government we're going to stop what we're doing. Stop encroaching in our land. Stop this development. See, we want to, as I said yesterday, those of you that heard me as I was talking to the uh, one of the reporters, I said that we want to leave something behind for our grandchildren. We want to leave something behind for the next generation. I want to be able to leave something good for our great-grandchildren. We are thinking ahead. We are thinking about the future. We want them to have a good, clean land, something that they could live and look forward to. When you clear cut the land, you, you, you're, you're, you're uh, destroying the land. When you uh, make mines, you're destroying rivers and creeks. And uh, when you take stuff that, are, that belong to nature, you're, you're hurting the land, you're, you're uh, causing devastation, not only for us as human beings, but also to the animals. I often think about the birds. I often think about squirrels and martens, tree-dwelling animals. How would you feel one morning you come home and the apartment that you're living here in Toronto is suddenly missing? Well, that's what's happening with our birds, with our, with our tree-dwelling animals. A squirrel goes home thinking it's going home, the tree that he's been living on is gone. And if you woke up one morning here in Toronto and you go, and you go to your, your apartment building, it's gone. How would you feel? You wouldn't like it because your kids would have no place to live. You'd have no place to eat supper. You'd be sitting and looking at that big building and say, well, where did it go? So that's what they're doing to these animals. They're devastating uh, uh, natural living things, things that we depend on, things we eat, things that sustain us. We, as native people, continue to eat wild, wild life. Wild life is still part of our diet. We still eat ducks, moose, and, and other things that we harvest. And not just the animals, but we have our like blueberries, uh, raspberries, and other kinds of berries that, we, that is a part of our diet. We also have medicines that we, we collect. When we go to the river, we pluck out, uh, we call it weekend. We pluck that out, we use that. It helps us uh, with our illnesses. We take weekend so we can feel better. It helps our bodies. But when you pollute the land, 
you, you also pollute that medicine. And we're unable to harvest it because you're polluting it. So all this damage is being done by these companies for the almighty dollar. The dollar is their god. And so we are we are here today and we are telling to we are telling both governments, not just the, the province of Ontario, but also the government of Canada, stop this devastation, stop giving permits, stop saying okay, and Mr. Ford, quit making easy access for mining companies, stop it now. that they are consulting native people. They say that we are talk to them. I tell you, sometimes, yes, they do send a, a, a notice, but that's all it is, is a notice. It's not, that's not consulting. It's not consulting at all. Or they send an email saying that uh, there's, a, there's been a, a permit issued to just uh, north of Grassy Narrows. It's just uh, nothing but a notice, nothing but a letter telling us what it's all about. True consulting. You should come to our community, come and talk to us face to face, come and hear what our people have to say. That's what we call true consulting. Come and see me face to face. Don't just uh, send me an email. Don't just send me a letter. Come and see me. Come and talk to me. Well, we'll sit down together and we'll tell you how we feel. We've been living on this land for years and years and thousands of years. We took care of it. We never polluted it. We never harmed it. We lived in harmony with it. But now we have these companies coming in, clear-cutting our land, drilling holes in our land. They often say as well that all the methods we use today are eco-friendly. We have better techniques now. We, uh, we do it in a better way than, than we used to uh, 30, 40 years ago. That's a, that's a lie, a total lie. I almost said BS, but that's a part of my language. <laughs> and uh, it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. The, the last time we came to Toronto, the last time we came and protested, that was back in March. One of my counselors here, he's, this is my counsel, my three councillors, and we have another councillor back home. Uh, Chris Monias and, uh, and the previous chief, they, as you know, they were kicked out of the Ontario legislation. They were escorted out. But you know what? The worst thing is two days later, Doug Ford was on TV saying, I have a good relationship with Native people. What a bunch of... <laughs> he doesn't have a, a great relationship with Native people. He hasn't even talked to me once. How can you say you have a relationship with someone when you never talk to them? When you never talk to all of them? He has to talk to all of us, not just certain people that he thinks that he can have a way with. He should be talking to me, he should be talking to Chief Munoz, he should be talking to other chiefs that say no. Because we are saying no. And we are sending a clear message today. The message is no mining, no forestry, no development. We want our land to stay the way it is. Our land keep our land pure we want our land to stay pure 
as I mentioned before, we, we're doing this not just for us today, but we're doing it for future generations that so that they will be able to continue to do the activities that we used to do, and that's our traditional practices and our way of life. We are fighting for that, and we are doing it for our children and our grandchildren, and let it remain so. Thank you. I say stop, you say forward, stop, forward. stop, forward. stop, forward. I say land, you say back, land, back. land, back. stop, forward. stop, forward. land, back. Woo. All right. We have I, Cecilia Bikes to the stage from KI First Nation. We have a round of applause for Cecilia. Good afternoon. It's so, it's so beautiful out. And your presence here is awesome. All your beautiful people. And I just want to say that uh, I'm here again. I was here in March. And I will continue to, to advocate for people and to also support any, any of the other First Nations that are struggling with uh, mining, mining companies to encroach in, in their areas. We are trying to raise more awareness amongst our young people. They're the ones who will be carrying on our work. Because uh, as you can see, I'm getting old, but then there are others who are behind me. And uh, what we're doing today now is for them, for their future, for their children. We have a huge population of young people, and um, it's getting to be really like of um, urgency for them to start picking up and learning more of our traditional ways, getting back on the land. There has been a revival up to a certain extent in that area. We are, we have a camp and we are using, utilizing that camp to teach our, young ch our younger children, families. It's there for healing too, because uh, after COVID, a lot of us needed that extra help. To, to recoup and also to quite the many mental health issues that we have in our community. But as for the land itself, I come from a very beautiful community with a huge lake and it's still clean and we like to keep it that way. It's the wish of many, wish of many to keep it that way for years to come. So we need to be quite vocal and raise awareness on how we move forward. How to defend our land, and also to help defend the lands of many other First Nations. And we will always stand together with anybody that goes through the same struggles that we had. Because we did have a we had uh, serious issues with mining company and the, and the government back in the day when we went to jail. So I did some time too. And nowadays people, young kids ask me, why did you go? What did you do wrong? And I said, N I didn't do anything wrong. I was merely speaking up for you people and guarding our community and our many resources. <laughs> We have an abundance of um, resources that we that are still intact, and we want, our aim is to keep them that way as long as we can, till we develop something meaningful that we will leave for our children. And I understand that it's also the 
the fight and the struggle that uh, the other communities are facing at the moment. And I, I just want to say that um, I am so thankful to be part of this group. I'm on council again, and, um, and I just thank everybody for supporting us in the past and today. And we will continue to expect that, and we will continue to be loud for our land, our people, and our, and our animals, and our waters. We will be loud. We won't take, we can't take anymore. They have to, the government have to, has to listen to us, and whatever the court is planning and continues to do so, that has to stop. So we need to be loud, and I thank you for being here today. We will stand in solidarity, solidarity and uh, unity, and we will fight as we have uh, our self-determination for our nations and for our people. And that's uh, that's it for now. Thank you so much. I would like to call up Chief Stanley Anderson from Wapi Kaupuran with First Nation. We have a round of applause. I introduced myself as, uh, you know, as my spirit name, uh, as I would call it, like the Nor. Uh, the Northern Skyman. I come from uh, an Asturian clan. My name is Stanley Anderson, under my government government name, and uh, I work for my First Nations Wawakika as a as a deputy chief, and uh, and I've been involved with this group since uh, since January. We signed the agreements between uh, three First Nations uh, on Grassy Narrows and. Uh, AI. I'll share a little story where I come from. And uh, between uh, KI, Gishinamek, Savininwak, we're not that far. And uh, we come from a fly in remote community. You know, you see our lakes, our land. We pick up our medicines, we get our food from there. We still drink from the lakes. That's how pure it is. And a few years ago, KI was threatened under uh, under the mining across their lake. And what happens upriver happens in our community too. So we support it and we still continue supporting what KI does for, you know, with our First Nation. We work together. And that's what we've been doing. So in, uh, in other, other words that, you know, there's uh, the, the other leadership that were here, they were, they said most of the stuff that needs to be heard. As for myself, I am very honored to be here, to represent my community and the rest of the five communities that band together to uh, uh, join together. I like to say thank you for everybody that's that's here and uh, to, for supporting us, the leaderships, and, uh, everyone that's here. Oh, uh, thank you, me good. I'd like to call up our next speaker, Chief Chris Minias from Nesticante First Nation. We have a round of applause.
test, test. Hello, thank you. Uh, got, uh, my name is uh, Chris Munias. I'm the chief of uh, Nishkanaga First Nation. Behind me are uh, uh, my uh, people that uh, come to support this event. Uh, they are land users. They are uh, Aboriginal title holders. They are treaty rights holders. And they are our uh, land defenders. Just like everybody else in the community. And this is what, I, this is what we say, no rig of fire without our free prior informed consent. There hasn't been any consultation or accommodation made to the First Nation since day one. We have been asking for meetings, we have been asking for an audience to, uh, for them to listen, to come and talk to our people on our homes, at our community, in a language that we understand. This is what we're asking. That's the only thing we're asking for. But the Ford government doesn't want to do that. Instead, he wants to do divide and conquer. First Nations. Getting other First Nations to act as agents of the Crown. That's what I heard in court last week. When I was at the court here at the Supreme Court of Justice on University Avenue. One of the communities, one of the First Nations that were there said they are acting as agents of the Crown. Tell me that's not divide and conquer. It is divide and conquer. That's what they're doing. That's what they want to do. They want to pit First Nations against First Nations so they can have their minds, so they can have their free entry, so they can destroy our lands, our homelands. Even they try to dictate they try to dictate that the term we use as Anishinaabe people when we use homelands is not recognized in courts. They say you have to use traditional land. I have jurisdiction in my homeland. I'm a sovereign, we, have, we are a sovereign nation. We get to decide what we want to call our homelands, our traditional territories. Nobody else is going to do this. Nobody else is going to tell us how. Uh, back in March, uh, me and my uh, predece predecessor, Wayne Monias, there, we, uh, we were escorted out of the uh, Queen's Park <laughs> uh, for, uh, for uh, demanding, demanding a meeting with, uh, with Deb Ford. He wants to win. He's the one that wants to run a bulldozer over my homeland. He's the one that has to come and talk to me. Not Rickford, not the Minister of Mines Perry. Doug Ford has to come and talk to me. That's the only one I will accept. If he wants to consult with me, Doug Ford has to do it. Nobody else. And uh, we we have been uh, we have been uh, under a lot of uh, a lot of crises lately. How can you consult somebody that uh, that has a suicide crisis since 2013? How can you have crisis with anyone that has health crisis since 20 years or more? How can, you have, how, how can you have consultation with somebody that has been under boil water advisory for 28 years? More than 28 years. How can we properly be consulted if those things ha hasn't been met? We have shortage of housing. We're over 100 homes that we, we, we cannot house our people. Our people have to leave the community to go live, to go live in, and some of them die in Thunder Bay or some other uh, urban centers because there's no houses for them. How can we get, how can we 
being properly consulted when those things happen. Just a few weeks ago, we had to uh, bury somebody that was homeless in Thunder Bay, that had no fixed address, because we had no homes. And that happens almost every year in our community, where we have to uh, bring people back in a coffin. Tell me that's justice. That's what it is, shame. How can we continue to uh, continue to uh, keep up with notices, emails? We don't have when, when we don't have the proper resources. During the pandemic, our community was uh, was uh, under lockdown. We didn't we didn't allow in any meetings. We did not allow any gatherings because we wanted to save our people, make sure our people doesn't get sick. And because we did that, I can only see, I can honestly say we had zero deaths during the pandemic. But at the same time, Ford government says, the Ford government says, Ontario has, its, has met its legal obligation to consult Nishkandaga during the pandemic. That, those are lies. That's, to be honest, bullshit. Yeah, I speak, I, I speak the way I want to speak. I don't... <laughs> you know, Ford government tells, uh, tells the people of Ontario They'll do this, they'll do that, they'll get the mines, they'll get the roots built. They'll get, they'll, they'll get the, uh, they'll, they'll get the uh, critical minerals that they need from the north. But those are lies. That's not gonna happen without our free prior informed consent. He's doing that just to get votes. He's doing that just to win elections. But nothing will happen without our free prior informed consent. If we don't protect the river, if we don't protect the, uh, the environment, if we don't protect our lands, if we don't protect our future, no one will. Thank you. We have another big round of applause. All right, we know it's hot. Please keep staying hydrated. Um, thank you so much for being here today. What an incredibly powerful list of speakers here. Uh, for all of us who are settlers here today, one of the most powerful ways that we can show our solidarity is to show up meaningfully for Indigenous land defense on these lands. Always, always, always. Um, we're gonna do, we just wanna thank a lot of the organizations that have made today possible, and then I'm gonna invite Judy Rebick up here, who's gonna, let you know of a really exciting and important event we want you to be at um, in September. And then we're gonna actually have an open mic for any folks from, uh, any members of the Land Alliance who would like to come and speak. Not for settlers, I will be watching for you. Please don't come here and start telling us about your feelings. This is for community members from the nations. Just a reminder. All right, we wanna thank Amnesty International, 350.org, Lead Now, Kairos, Indigenous Climate Action, the David Suzuki Foundation, Food Share, Banking on a Better Future, Climate Justice Toronto, the 519 Community Centre, Greenpeace, Climate Strike Toronto, Rising Tide Toronto, Decolonial Solidarity, QP Ontario, Ontario Federation of Labour, Public Service Alliance of Canada, Ontario Public Service Alliance, OSSTF, Wilderness Committee, York CGSU, Toronto Metropolitan University, the University of Toronto, OPERGS, and more. Stand.Earth, Surge, Quakers, Seniors for Climate Action Now, Toronto Council Fire, Mining and Justice Solidarity Network, Community Peacemaker Teams, Toronto Environmental Alliance, and the Workers Action Center. 
Thank you so much for your support. All right, we'd like to welcome Judy Rebick up here. Judy, where are you? Welcome, Judy. Hi, everybody. Thank you to Maya, and I'm very honored to be here on a platform, sort of a platform, with all of the chiefs of this fantastic alliance that's been formed. And as settlers and allies, I want every single one of you here to think about the importance of this struggle. You know, at the beginning, Chief Tuttle said, we decided we'd be stronger together than alone. And they have formed this alliance, which should be an inspiration to all of us. It certainly is to me. And we, and we have to do the same. Every organization that's here committing to, to defending the right of indigenous people to have free informed consent before mine. So I, you know, I'm kind of known for leading chants, so I want to lead a couple of chants and then tell you where I want you to chant next, okay? Yay! So the first thing is it's very clear and become clearer every day that indigenous rights and climate justice are inextricably linked at every level. So I'm going to ask you, what do we want? And you're going to answer climate justice. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Okay, now I was trying to think of what rhymes with consent and I didn't get it. <laughs> but somebody I'm sure will get it. But what I want to say is um, no mining without consent. 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 Okay, good one. No mining without consent. We gotta tell the government. No mining without consent. We gotta tell the government. Good one. Okay, so what I want you all to do is I want every single person here, those in all the groups that were listed, and those of you that belong to probably other groups, to make a commitment so one of the main, your main priorities this summer is to get thousands of people out to Queen's Park, I think it'll be at Queen's Park, on September 27th to defend the, ally, the land alliance and to say once and for all the people of Ontario do not want mining without free informed prior consent, and we support the Land Alliance. And there's going to be uh, flyers as you leave that you can use to, to uh, inform everybody. We'll have lots of social media, but be sure that you're here and bring at least 10 other people, help, 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 preferably 50 to 100 other people on September 27th. <laughs> you used to give speeches or something, Judy? Yeah. You used to give speeches or something. Um, all right, I say land, you say back, land, 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 land. We would like to welcome any community members from the Land Alliance who would like to speak. The mic is yours. Are there any community members who would like to speak? We're welcoming any community members from the Land Alliance who would like to share some words with us on the mic. Very glad to be here. My name is uh, Samuel McKay. I'm a council member from Chinameric Sukkot Inuit. And I want to uh, clearly inform everybody present here that we stand in solidarity with the uh, Grassy Narrows and Miss Kandaga and the other members of uh, the Land Alliance First Nations. Because whatever happens to any of those communities will happen to us. 
We've already been hit on with the industry in the province once before. And uh, we ended up in jail for the defense of our environment and our territory. We were in jail for 68 days. And um, KI is about 1,200 kilometers north of Toronto. May not mean much to you, but to me that's home. And that's my life. It starts with the land and it ends with the land. There's no in between. And as I informed the government of the day when we were fighting with Platnecks, and uh, when we were fighting with the industry, the government of Ontario, I told them that as long as my people say no to mining in our territory, that's what it's going to be. And yes, they can try and come in. And I did tell them that the only way they can come in into our territory without our consent is they're going to have to lock me up for a long time to be able to come in without my consent because I'm mandated by my community. And the answer is no to resource development. We are, we are uh, a member of uh, Treaty 9 Adhesion, the James Bay Treaty 9 uh, Adhesion. It was signed in my community in 1929. And uh, we've spoken time and time again with our elders what their understanding was. We did not surrender or give up our land. We agreed to share. Has there been any sharing? No. Even if you come to my community, if you look at uh, the, our community itself, it's like a checkerboard. There's different, uh, different uh, claims to our territory, Even our, uh, our community. There's uh, provincial crown lands, so to speak, and there's areas that uh, right within the community that we cannot build a house according to the government of Ontario. But we do it anyway, because it's our land. And it's been uh, probably, Jacob, uh, one of our, uh, our uh, land uh, environment director from KI can speak to it. Uh, it's been about 40 years trying to repatriate those portions of land in our community. And uh, we are finally making headway the last few months that there's going to be, uh, uh, Rick, uh, they're going to clean it up, and then along in the end, uh, we're going to they're going to be returned to KI as part of the reserved lands. And that, right now in our community, there's about uh, 13 contaminated sites within our community from other resource uh, people, uh, Department of Environment. Anglican Church of Canada, uh, Bell Canada, Hydro One, uh, airlines, private companies that were given permission to have access to our land without our consent, without uh, being informed about it. Because our community uh, got our reserve status in the 70s. And long before that, the government of Canada and the government of Ontario were handing out parcels of our land right in the community, like handing out candy on Halloween night. And that's just not right. And like I said, there's at least 13 identified parcels of land that are contaminated that need to be cleaned up because we're not able to use it. And that's been our experience all these years as resource development in our area. Pickle Lake, a lot of you might know where that is. A lot of our people went there in the 50s and 60s, and they died from illnesses that they contracted from working in the mines. And if it weren't for the First Nations of today, Pickle Lake would be a ghost town. It's the First Nations that keep it alive with the uh, transportation of goods. 
And I remember my dad worked in the Army base in uh, James Bay, Hudson's Bay, Kiwanak. And I had an opportunity to go there. There were heavy equipment, drums of oil, sinking into the land, and they just finally cleaned it up not too long ago. And we also have a gold mine that's shut down in World War II, and it's just sitting empty and cleaned 60 miles north of uh, our community. That has been our experience at resource development. That is the reason why we're adamant on saying no to any resource development activity within our territory. It's been nothing but negative experiences. And when we went up against Platnex, they wanted to have an open pit mine 17 kilometers from the south shore of our lake, which we depend on. And they wanted to have an open pit mine and drain out two lakes that are connected by river systems into our lake, where our fish spawn, we have medicines, we have migratory routes of land animals, and this is what they wanted to destroy. And that's why we were adamant in saying no, that we were willing to put our freedom on the line to stop that. And the government of Ontario ultimately put a moratorium of 25 years to not have any uh, mining exploration activity happening within our territory. And those 25 years are coming up really fast. I think we may have about 11 years left. And it's going to be open season again in KI. And that's why we stand in solidarity with these uh, Land Alliance communities, because whatever happens to them, it's going to happen to us too. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, my name is Jacob Osterman. I, uh, I work for Shinebeg uh, Sabini Inuk, and I've uh, supported uh, Cecilia Big and Sam McKay. They were uh, incarcerated back in uh, 2008. They spent their time in jail for 68 days. And I believe that's why you're here today. You are continuing supporting us. Miigwech. Um, since uh, I'll just uh, briefly mention uh, we, what we've been doing since uh, their release back in 2018. We've been uh, trying to establish a plan, and we call that plan as uh, uh, KI Homeland Planning. That is uh, a framework that uh, we go by. It's all about KI. It's not about the Crown. It's not about Ontario. It's not about Canada, it's about KI. And this is where uh, our basis comes from. When we uh, are developing uh, our KI homeland planning. Very important. And it, does, it didn't mean that uh, we had lots of money doing that. It didn't, it didn't really happen. And that's why uh, we are here today in terms of First Nations that are trying to establish themselves there's going to be a lot of funds needed in every in every way, in every uh, uh, areas that uh, we need to be part of. There's so many areas like negotiations. You know, we don't have uh, experienced negotiators, as you know, what negotiations is involved in Canada. We don't have them, but we talk. We know what we're talking about. We know how to achieve uh, the things that we want to achieve. It's all, it's all there. And that's part of the uh, KI homeland, homeland planning. That's what it's all about. And um, I could talk about um, maybe a couple hours if I, if I want to talk about in details, but I don't want to do that. But anyways, um, just briefly, uh, we have uh, created uh, two declarations. One declaration dealt with our lands and resources. The second declaration dealt with our uh, self-determination, self-government, and so on. 
So we have those two decorations, and they're at the top. And then uh, just below, there are two anchors. We call them anchors. One anchor has to do with uh, uh, research, research on lands, mapping, and all that. So we have a, a robust of maps that we've created. And uh, the second area, the second anchor, has to do with uh, treaty, treaty legal uh, issues. So we got uh, those two uh, anchors. And then another, uh, underneath that, we have developed three operational documents. One of them is KI Watershed. The second one is KI Consultation Protocol. The third one is KI Collaborative Governance Framework. So all this um, I mentioned are part of KI Homeland Planning. Like I said, this is not about Ontario. This is not about Canada. This is about KI. And it's important to understand that um, this plan, the KI Homeland Planning, uh, comes from the grassroots people. It comes from the ground. It comes from our ancestors. So uh, in closing, I'm just going to read uh, something that um, we've always wanted to be reminded of. Um, as KI, uh, we always um, look upon our elders. And they teach us a lot. So I'm just going to read a bit of um, what they have said. And this is part of our uh, KI homeland planning. The sacred gift of life of our nation is rooted in territory of our ancestors. Our elders' teaching and knowledge of our rights and responsibilities allows us to care for our territory for the future generations. Our creation has placed us in our territory and has given us all necessities that we need to live and survive. Through the teachings of the land, we practice our responsibilities and obligations to the future generations. Our territory has provided for our peoples since the beginning of time and continues to provide for our peoples. This is our gift from the creation. Based on the inherent authority of our peoples, we, enact, we enacted our own laws through our own eternal processes. Our laws include in relation and responsibilities and obligation are as follows. Our territories, our land above and uh, below the ground, our resources, our animals, fish, birds, and all living creations, our laws to care for each other and to the creation, our language, our spiritual beliefs and practices, our culture, customs, and traditions, our right to self-determination, and our love and respect for each other, and the ability to share. These are our basis of uh, our KI Homeland Planning. Okay, leave it. Thank you. Hello, uh, good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon, good to see everybody here. Uh, my name is Marcus Munias. I'm a First Nation counselor for Nishkanaga First Nation. And uh, we, came, we came here to support the Land Defenders Alliance and uh, I'm gonna get my uh, community members to introduce themselves. Hello. My name is uh, Sylvia Sakini. I'm from Nishkandaga First Nation. Um, I'm here to support my community and uh, the other First Nations that are here with And um, I've always uh, been on the land with my mom growing up. Uh, she taught us how to survive on the land and what to use on the land when we were kids, me and my siblings. 
and that's what I'm trying to do for my kids as well. I have two daughters and two sons and a 10, 11 month old granddaughter. So I'm trying to pass that on to them. So we need to save our land, keep it healthy so we could use the wildlife that we survive from. Yeah, miigwech, and I'm grateful for being here today. Thank you. Hello. My name is Clayton Monias. I'm from uh, Nashkandaga First Nation. I'm a land user. I hunt. I hunt everywhere in the uh, Atoskan River to Atoskan River. I've been everywhere in that land. Even my kids, I teach my kids to go there and, and my friends. And today I still go there, go hunt and fish. That's what I do for a living. I never stop hunting. That's how I live. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sylvia and Clayton. So uh, I just wanted to share today that uh, 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 the Ring of Fire is located on the peatlands, uh, and uh, the, in the carbon storehouse that is one of the largest in the world, where it's uh, situated on. So. Uh, I, as, as, as First Nations people in that area, that's, that's what we want to do is protect the environment, the water, the fish, you know, to preserve our, uh, our, uh, our environment, our habitat, you know, for, uh, for, uh, for our future generations. <clears throat> so, you know, this massive mine that's uh, potentially that's going to be developed is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is really huge. So, you know, like imagine if that carbon is released into the, into the atmosphere, you know, like uh, the, then the world, the global, the global climate will just be more, more, uh, more global, more endangered, right? Like, you know, like for humanity. So it's actually, uh, a, we're, we're getting to a world stage now, you know, when we're, when we're uh, uh, with these, all these mindings and all that, and environmental impacts. So uh, yeah, that's what I just wanted to share here today. So uh, I'm, I'm, we're very grateful to be here today and uh, Good to see everybody. Uh, thank you. Miigwech. All right, we just want to give another minute in case anybody else would like to speak. If there's any other folks who would like to come and speak from the Land Alliance, any other community members. Just gonna give folks a moment to decide if they'd like to. Wish you and Ian, everybody. My name is Christopher James. I uh, came out here to uh, support the Land Alliance as well as uh, the the land in the north. So that's where I'm from. I came to the to Toronto about six years ago, and I was living up in uh, the areas that uh, Grassy Narrows is and Red Lake area, Dryden area, and Kenora. So 
all around the lakes, so the lakes, those are a life up there, right? Eh? And uh, we get all our water from the lakes too. But the water up in the north, I know because it's affected me, is uh, infected. So it's not good. It's not good water anymore. It looks nice. It looks beautiful. I traveled all over the land up there taking pictures in the 2000s and traveled with my family and my wife. And, uh, you know, just enjoyed the land while we could. And uh, we tried to have a family, but we couldn't because uh, it just keep on coming out. It doesn't stay in. Right? So. We lost four babies that way. And, uh, we wanted to come here to get help, to heal. So that's why I'm here, here right now. I'm healing, right? I'm healing. So I came up to share my story with everybody so I could heal. And I've been thinking about this for years. I saw this in my vision. I was going to be up here talking to everybody. Even with a shaky voice, I tell the truth. Dead Boy Wins means truth in my language. So we always tell the truth. It means something to us. We learn that from with great spirit, and we learn that from Mixe, the eagle, when we learn that for our medicines, our tobacco, Sima. Right, we pray with our with our great medicines and we pray to the four directions because that's the land right so we, we we go to the land for everything and that's our connecting that's how we connect to our spirit and to creators through the land right that's what i was taught so i didn't know anything else really you know i came to the cities once in a while with my family you know, ride the subway, stay in a nice hotel, right? So a lot of us, we come to the cities because of uh, appointments, because there's uh, really no health care that has specialty uh, for any of the needs that happens up north, so we have to come here for appointments, eh? So it's kind of the, the way our communities work when we come to the cities is we're coming here for appointments a lot, right? And that's the way people get off. So I saw the city when I was younger, um, you know, I was really... You know, enamored with the city and the way the city is and I met a lot of people from the land here you know throughout the years that I've been here too so I always share a story I like a uh, storytelling I'm a storyteller and uh, I also work with the youth so by choice you know so I'm a computer engineer by trade and I do uh, acting part-time for you know films and stuff and um, I work with the youth because it's important to me, right, personally, for healing and also for our growth in our own community. And plus I can share our knowledge and share what I learned, right, with the youth directly in the cities. So the cities are uh, a point of contact and it's like where the youth go, right? There's a lot of youth coming here off the land, so we got to share that knowledge. The story I like to share is actually directly from Grassy. And it's uh, from one of my friends when I was a little kid. His name is Eli. And he's from Grassy. And uh, my mom and I used to go up to Grassy Neros. My mom's Nagani Makwakwe. And we used to go up to Grassy Neros for ceremonies a lot because she was uh, friends with some people that were living up in Grassy there, Mary Jane and Curtis. But we used to go up there a lot for ceremonies and um, one time we went up for a ceremony, Western Doors ceremony, I didn't know what that was. I was like, what's a Western Doors ceremony? What's a wake? So I, I, I learned this really early at, at an early age that these ceremonies were important to us. And it was for Eli, a friend of mine. So we traveled all the way from Thunder Bay to Grassy Narrows in the middle of winter. And uh, I didn't know my friend died. I didn't even know what that was, you know. So my mom was doing a ceremony with his family and uh, community up there, and I'm on the land with the kids in the middle of winter. 
and uh, you know we were like five years old and we're just out on the lake in the frozen lake trying to fish and stuff like that and they were just telling me the way they live and how it affects them and stuff and I didn't understand why my friend died I just couldn't reconcile it like I couldn't reconcile that fact like what killed him like he just looked normal laying in that casket he looked completely normal like I just seen it before and uh, he died because he took one too many vitamins imagine that Eli passed away because he took one too many vitamins I don't know what that you know means to anybody in the city but when you're on the land and the land and the water is exposed to heavy metals and you drink and you eat from that land you, you eat the fish and you eat the meat he ate moose meat and he ate fish and drank the water and his uh, system became toxic so his mom uh, had uh, little vitamins there flintstone vitamins they taste like candy and he ate one and she put it away but he went up and he grabbed it from the cupboard and he took he opened it up and he took he took another one right and you know normally that wouldn't be a bad thing but since his system was so toxic with these like metals in his system it was overload and it killed him right so yeah I learned that at a young age and yeah it was the first time I ever dealt with uh, somebody ever passing in my community so I just wanted to share that with everybody and share Eli's story you know because he's not here he's not here with us he never got a chance to grow up right so you know we all we all uh, wish that our children can grow up with us and we all wish that our children are gonna have a happy life and a healthy life and that our children are gonna have their own children and we're gonna have grandkids and great-grandkids and stuff but Sometimes that's not a reality for some people in our communities on our land. Because that's the way it, it affects us. The land's affected and we are affected. Chimbangwich, thank you for listening to my story. I think we want to thank everybody, every community member who's spoken for your vulnerability and your directness and your leadership in this work. We are so grateful to be able to learn and to understand more. So thank you. All right, folks, we're going to be moving into a closing. So we're going to have a song. So we'd like to invite everybody just for this last part to come back out here and join us um, as we have the women who are going to be singing come on up. So if everybody, if you want to move in for this final part, we're going to be closing out. This is a friendly reminder to drink water. So if everybody can move in, that would be so wonderful. Um, can
Kosho, give me one game in the go, Makwang in the Nuema, make to them. Up to one kitchen, be wet, no go, give a sham, and peel. We are all stop at talk on duck, where work, and I'll kind of wear my pee, um, kind of ode, a bench bar. Under the skin in the gum, when the gum, can come to them. I'm, I'm from Grassy Narrows and um, I want to thank all of you for making your day to come here and support us and acknowledge all the chiefs and the council people that came here to fight against um, no mining on Anishinaabe territory. Um, I, I wanted to also acknowledge like all the the Anishinaabe that are in our homelands right now um, that are struggling every day, you know, like to to be alive, like for such a basic necessity as water, nipe. And that's what we're protecting here is the water for the future generations, like for for the like the mining, it's money. For us it's to be alive. So that's such a basic, basic request we're making we want to continue to be alive with our languages, our culture, our way of life, to hunt, to fish. It's so basic. So that's what we ask upon like the citizens of Toronto and Canada to, to know we just want to be alive. And that's so basic. Miigwech. All right, would anybody else like to speak before we close out? Any of the folks from the Land Alliance? Ani Wache. Sagobre Dishnakaz. My name is Amber. And I also have three different last names, Favreau, oh Wynn, Gooden. Uh, I am mixed up right now, but don't ask. That's a different story. But basically, here in this city, we get water every day. And it's such a luxury that you don't even realize what we get out of our cap every day. And even at every festival that we have around the city, the city trucks along fresh water for us to fill out right into 
a reusable container for ourselves. And we take these simple things for so, so much for granted, and we just need to stop and really reprioritize what really sustains the human life on this world. And it, I'm going to say world because this goes far beyond grassy narrows now. And people are crying out all over the world about what's happening with people and mining and the effects of mining. Now, I um, started to do the River Run protest through um, a lady, uh, her, I think her last name is Sterling. I met her through York University um, in my undergrad for health studies. And that's how I started to get involved and become aware of what's happening in these territories because my family has always kept me in the cities. And, um, you know, very often, like, we would go on fasting and, and use the land for healing, for ceremonies. My family hunts, they hunt moose, they hunt deer, they fish, they trap. I have my last name of my family from the James Bay Coast is Trappers. Those are my family and they trap and they hunt. That was their lifestyle. So this needs to be respected and protected. And we need to be kinder. We need to be able to speak up for each other when it comes to the earth, the animals, and the environment because they've had enough. And we have more than enough concrete. We have more than enough precious metals. There are more than enough diamonds. And we have all of the technology and the science to prove that we don't need to mine anymore. So this is for our water. And I'm just so thankful that people are here from all over supporting this cause. Thank you so much. All right, we want to thank everybody who came out here today. It's meant so much to have you outside in the hot, hot sun. It's going to be a hot solidarity summer. Uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing everybody on September 27th. When? Amazing. Bring your unions, bring your comrades, bring your friends, bring your families. Indigenous communities on the front lines of climate crisis deserve our solidarity in the streets, in the courts, and on the land. I say land, you say back, land, back. land, back. land, back. land. Back. I say stop, you say forward, stop, forward. stop, forward. land, back. land. Back. Thank you so much for coming today. Woo!